Friggin. I'm the director of Cloud Connect and also Systemologist. Um, we've got a lot to cover in this session. So what I'm going to do is get straight into it and talk about the, um, the agenda for today's webinar. So basically, we're going to talk about the five tools of business systems. Um, we're going to go through what is systemology. So systemology itself is basically from directly from this book right here. And I became a systemologist about a year and a half ago. So we're going to talk about how systemology can work with your business and what are some of the tools that you can use to capture your processes and get them into a platform where you're actually managing your systems. Okay. So we're going to talk about the critical client flow. So that's effectively step one in systemizing your business is working out what does that critical client flow look like from the point where you, you reaching out to get clients to the point where you're getting new clients. Uh, we're going to talk about the systems platform. So where did we actually put those processes and systems? Uh, we're going to talk about the finance platform. So ensuring that you are using a cloud-based finance package. I'm going to talk about the project management platform. So how are you keeping track of your projects, your to-do list? You're keeping track of all the things you need to be working through. Um, we're going to talk about the office suite, ensuring you have the right one and you're not still hitting send and receive from old servers from the 90s, um, making sure that it's all cloud-based. And finally, we're going to go through the the customer relationship management software, so your CRM, so how you're nurturing your clients, um, how are you keeping track of your activities, keeping track of your sales. So we're going to go through a lot of the demos. I'm going to leave the presenting screen up throughout this whole presentation because I'm going to be jumping through not only the slides, um, but also doing some demos of different softwares as well. Okay, so I'm just going to click this. So what you will learn by the end of this webinar, okay, you're going to understand the five tools for business systems. And then we're going to go through why systems and processes are so important. And we're going to capture, learn how to capture your systems and processes, where to put your systems, um, talk about cloud-based finance platforms, which ones to use, uh, the different project management apps that are available, um, picking the right office suite, and also how to use a CRM for those nurturing those clients and tracking sales and activities. So basically, if you look at the five different tools that every business should have, and now these are the core things. Now, there's a lot of... Uh, questions around what's the differences between systems management and project management, for example. So a lot of companies will keep their their systems and processes in Google Drive or Dropbox or something like that. And what makes it different? What makes it unique? So I've just found a, I mean, 25 years of working with small business that these are the five core tools to use in any business to help grow. So the systems management, where do you put your systems? So you've got processes that you've tracked, you've got bullet points, you've got headings, you've got video clips, you've got screenshots. You've got Loom recordings of processes that you might do in your business. Where do you then store those so that you know that they're in the right department, in the right area, so that anyone that you're onboarding knows where to go to learn more about those systems and processes? So under the finance, you've got Zero, QuickBooks, and MYB. Those are the three big players in the game. Um, all three are basically cloud-based. The only difference between Zero and QuickBooks, you can go to any browser and sign in, and you're on. MYB. I believe is still, you have to have a small version of MYB installed on your computer, but even on the data is stored up on the cloud as well. So I think that's coming through soon. Um, project management. So there's ClickUp, Asana, Monday, Trello. There's a whole variety of project management. So this is where you store your projects and what are the to-dos, what are the checklists that you go through to ensure that you get these things done? Okay, so then in your office suite, two big players, Google Workspace, Office 365. If you have either one of those, that's perfect. You want to ensure that you've got cloud-based solution for your email, calendar, and contacts. Google Workspace is great because you've got an Excel spreadsheet and examples. You've got your Google Sheets and anyone that can collaborate on that Google Sheet. You can be on one Google Sheet and you're all chatting. Um, Office 365, again, is cloud-based as well. So you've got your OneNote and SharePoint, things like that as well you can use. You just want to have the ability to go to any computer, any device, log in, and it's working. Okay, The CRMs. We've got Pipedrive, High Level, HubSpot, Salesforce. Like, there's so many CRMs out there to help you manage your clients. Today, we're going to actually have some demos of through these products. So, with System Hub, this is a product from Systemology to actually put your processes and systems in, and also have a lot of learning track from those processes that you create. QuickBooks and then in Zero and NYB, it's a gimme. We're not going to go through any demos in that. We're just basically knowing that those are the three big players in the finance. Project management. We're going to do a little demo of ClickUp and just show you how you can um, keep track of your clients, how you're working with your own projects, uh, how to keep track of who's doing what and by when. Okay, Office Suite, again, if you have Google Workspace or Office 365, you know how they work. You know the purpose of them. 
if you're still hitting send and receive and waiting for those emails to come through and you have to go back to the office to jump on a computer that has an email, you need to move across to something like Google Workspace or Office 365. Um, with the CRM, we're actually going to do a little bit of a demo of Pipedrive just to show you how you have a sales pipeline. You can track your sales. You can track your activities. You can create um, leads so that you can track to your website on the website forums. You can have those little chat bots and web forms, uh, instant messaging, things like that that are linked in within Pipedrive that allow you to communicate, nurture those clients, bring them in, create those leads from them. I'm even going to show you a little bit of an example of what I've done with LinkedIn for this event as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go out of this space right here and go straight into the critical client flow. Okay. So basically what this is, this is stage one of the systemology approach. So if you're trying to capture your systems and you probably have a thousand processes that you have all in your head and you're trying to get them out and you want to understand where to actually put them, where do you start? The critical client flow is based around taking one product or service that you love. Like it's a, it's a job that you're working through that it's the perfect client, the perfect job. They pay on time. It's a smooth running process. We want to use this as your first example because we want to be able to easily capture what it looks like to get the attention of your clients. So how are you getting them? Are you getting them the referrals, social media, radio, television? How are you actually capturing your clients? And then it comes down to the inquiry. So what do you do? What's the first stage of actually getting those clients? So the whole point of this is just to see what that flow looks like. And then each one of those boxes represents a process. So if you are using social media, like how are you using social media? What's the process that you do that? How do we capture that? How do we record that process so that we can just take that single process and put it into something like System Hub where you can actually then go back and view it and the onboard new people that are starting your business. My, my analogy is if you have a 15 year old kid who knows nothing about your industry and you had to onboard them, how could you teach them about every process you have in your business so it makes sense? So we're gonna just bring it right down to the basic level so everything is really easy and it's actually fun and digital to go to to learn about a process. So once we go through the sales, like how are we actually capturing those sales? So we have the inquiry, it might be email or phone. We then now do a quote, for example, they're viewing the quote, they approve the quote, you do the job, you get paid the money, you're onboarding that process, so you're actually doing the job, and then that potential prospect becomes a client. And then how you deliver your product and how you repeat that process. So what I have here is an example, and this is a physiotherapy company, and we've gone through the CCF quite easily. So this is a company that knows exactly how they're treating their, their clients, how they're getting them, and how they're actually following up with them. So you can see, the attention, referrals, Google ads, Facebook ads, social. Each one of these boxes represents a process that we can capture. Again, we're not trying to think of a thousand processes. We're focusing on just one at a time. It's like a piece of puzzle. And every time you add more of a piece of a puzzle, the picture starts to appear. So this is what we're trying to achieve by capturing this flow. So they do a website booking. They're on the phone, initial greeting. They then fill out a new patient form. They have the treatment. They have a recommended action plan and a recommended, uh, actually, they, they then have the paid and then a book recommended talent, a treatment, and then the next day follow up and a one month follow up call. So they're just, that's their process and then it gets repeated. So what we do here is we capture that and we put it into what's called the department roles. So here we have basically exactly the same thing in those boxes are brought across to here. So which one of those processes can we capture and which department would they go into? Now, I'm not going to show you a full flow in here. This is something we can go do down the track. Basically, we capture all those processes and know who's the person that knows most about that process. We then move them over to a systems assigned sheet. So we know the department. We know the name that was in that CCF. We capture it here. We know who knows most about that particular process. Where are we getting that information? Is it from Zero QuickBooks? Is it from their brain? They just need to tell us the story of that process. How do we capture that? The capture method, method could be Zoom or Google Meet or any type of recording where you're using like Loom, Camtasia, uh, you're recording the session even from a GoPro. You can get your phone and just video someone doing a role in your business and capture that process and turn it into a, a system inside your system hub. When was it extracted? All the way down to the point where it's reviewed and it's completed. So the goal is to get a thumbs up or turn it green, meaning that green is good, it's done. So we've captured that process. So I'm just going to quickly show you now what it looks like inside of a system hub. So we're going to take an example, a quick example of a client. So this, we have systems 
policies and training. Okay, so you can see in the systems here, we have all the departments here. Now, simply what we've done is kept it super simple by doing multiple CCFs based on the product or service that this company has. Now, even from their website, this particular company has six primary services. This is where we captured their systems. Okay, what are your services? What are you guys actually doing? Well, they do domestic, commercial, automation, EMS, et cetera. So every one of these departments has all six of their services they provide, all six, all right? So what we then basically do, if you look at marketing, for example, what are they doing in the marketing space? How do we use social media to capture our audience? How do we create a builder's list? And then in commercial, Xen, marketing has the service and then the processes within that service. That's how it's broken down. So every single service they have has finance, invoicing and certification, administration. These are the process for the workflows that they do. So every single one of these has a workflow and it's simply capturing the process. And again, inside System Hub, you can have videos, screenshots, screen shares, any recording that you can do to make it one easy to go to so that everyone in your business wants to go into this space here to learn how to do a process. They're not picking your brains and not asking everyone every single day, how do I do something? You guide them into here. And then under the policies, this is where we capture more of the internal things. So what are we doing within your business, which is allowing you to understand who's who? So organizational structure, who's who? You just do a simple organization chart of who everyone is in your business. Then you have your team members and who is everyone in your business? Managing director, business development manager, and what are their roles and responsibility within the business? So that's how we're capturing every single thing you do in your business. We have a place and a home for it. It's not just Google Drive. It's not just Dropbox where we're storing this information. So in the training, we can now take the processes we've gathered from the systems and we can now turn it into a learning track. So social media marketing, right? How social media is used to capture, how to create a builder's list. They can go through this course and they basically watch the videos, watch the bullet points and they mark it off as complete. Okay, so that's an onboarding process of how System Hub is used to track your systems and processes, to track your, your internal policies, whether health, health and safety, annual leave, sick leave, all those forms that are used in your business, this is where they sit. This is where it's really super easy to go to. Then you have your onboarding with your training and your learning tracks there. Okay, so that's basically how System Hub works. And what we're gonna not now talk about is, we're gonna go into the project management. So this is these are systems, this is where your systems reside. Now we're gonna talk about project management. So in this example, we've got ClickUp. Okay, so ClickUp, you can use, be using Asana, Monday, Trello. There's a variety of project management tools out there. ClickUp is very easy to use. It's very, the user interface is quite good because it's very simple just to, to navigate around. So simply every single time we use ClickUp, we have four statuses that we use that are most common. So what you're trying to do is have a place for your projects and what is the list of things where it's a checklist or whatever you're working through, how are you getting basically your projects labeled and so you know when things are done. So simply I have here open, it could be to do, brainstorming, whatever that looks like, the stage one of capturing what you're working on. So the tasks and then you have subtasks, more subtasks over here, who's assigning that? So I can click that and say me, I'm assigned to do that and I'm gonna get this done by tomorrow, okay? So you simply capture the process, the actual task any subtasks that are associated to that, who needs to do it and by when. That's simply what you want to be using your project management for. So if you have a checklist, a maintenance checklist that you go, this is where you store it. So in our world of working with clients, we have open is brainstorming. It's like, what are we wanting to accomplish? We want to set up System Hub, ClickUp. We want to set up a CRM. We want to set up emails, all that kind of thing. This is where I meet with the client and work through everything sitting in the open. When it gets booked in, I drag it simply into the booked in stage. So we now know that the things that are booked in are here. And again, who's it to and when's it due by? Then once we're now working on it, we now have the in progress. So I'll use some examples here. This is now in, process, in progress. So we're now working our way through that. And let's say that we've completed that particular one there. I just click it, mark it off as closed. Okay, that means it's done. So everything that you've done that's ticked off, is through, it doesn't have to leave. It doesn't disappear because you want to reference what you've completed. You want to be able to go back and see what have you actually done in here and who did it and by when. Okay, so this is just a simple example of how ClickUp, and again, this is free. 
the version of ClickUp is then goes up to like $10 a month. But the majority of things you can do with ClickUp is the free version of ClickUp. You don't need to go spending all this money on subscriptions every month when this simply can track. If you want to start using goals and all the different things that comes with ClickUps, you can use that. You can use different parts of it, then go onto the paid platform. But start with the free one to start working your way through what are we doing and how many projects or processes do we have or projects do we have and what are the tasks linked to that, okay? So what we're going to do is we talked about finance. We know that it's either going to be one of the three. So I'm just going to jump back over to here and talk about, we've talked about System Hub. We know where to put our processes. We've talked about finance. We know these three big players in the game there. We did a little bit of review, review on ClickUp, um, Google and Office 365. If you have one of those, either of those, that's fantastic. That's a great starting point to keep track of all of your contacts, calendar, and your emails. So, what we're going to talk about now is, is Pipedrive. And the reason I'm zinging through is because I want to make sure that we're covering everything that's in here. So if you do have any questions, I'm just going to make sure I can see the chat, actually. So any questions, if you can see the chat, which is the little on the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a little blue um, chat line there, or just a little chat box. If you want to ask a question there, I want to see if we have any questions towards the end of the session so that I can answer any questions you might have. So what I want to do now is look at the CRM. We, the example we have here is Pipedrive. So this is a typical, this is your homepage of Pipedrive, OK? So this is where this is where you want to go to have all of your contacts, your calendars, and your, and your emails syncing with this program. So you simply go into settings, and you just sync your either your Office 365 or your Google Workspace. This is where everything sits. So every email you get from anyone gets stored in here, and it's transparent. So anyone that signs into your pipe drive can also see the flow of conversations, your activities, everything here. So this is just the basic screen that I created. So this is your typical sales pipeline prospect. Notice leads isn't there because pipe drive has its own leads inbox, which we'll go through in a minute. So then you have follow up needs specified. So you worked out what they wanted. You sent a quote, it's quote being viewed, quote approved, invoice client, invoice paid, typical sales pipeline. This here is, a, is an example company where they became a prospect, the follow-up. See, I'm just dragging that across. They sent the quote, they're being viewed, quote approved, you drag it into one. When you complete it, you can actually mark that off as one right there. And you now have a, a one deal basically inside your pipeline. So if I want to do a follow-up on here, I can simply click that, schedule an activity. And here's where you can just say follow-up. So I might call that an email and do follow-up. And we're going to set that to... Actually, we're going to leave it for today. So when I save that, you'll see that that goes green, and it shows me the activity. So I'm going to do a follow-up. So that's basically how you can have your sales. You can then go into and drag and drop whatever stage they're in. And to give you an idea of what one that's a little bit busier, this is one that's basically for the systemology approach of how we keep track of everything within systemology. And this is the process in which I keep track of every single sale or deal that I'm working with a client. And I simply just drag them into the correct stage that they're in. And you can automate that. So let's say, for example, um, we go to a quote sent. And I drag this into quote sent. And as soon as that goes into quote being viewed, I can trigger an automatic email that I've created from an email template to send an email to that client saying, let me know if you have any questions on that quote. So simply, they're going to get that. And they're going to say, wow, that's, that's crazy. This guy's just worked out that we've just looked at this quote. Because everything that you do inside Pipedrive is tracked. So every email that's opened, you get a notification. Every quote or sales document that gets opened or links that are opened, you get a notification as well. So it's a nice, easy way of knowing where you're at, where your proposals are sitting, where your clients are at different stages. And then you have the opportunity to communicate with them, whether you send an email, or you have automatic emails or automatic activities that get created simply from setting up workflow automations inside of here. Okay. So now I'm just going to take you into the leads inbox. OK, you'll, you'll see here we have all sources. So this is where the leads sit. That's why we don't have leads sitting in the sales pipeline, because you can nurture any one of these, these deals because of these leads, because they're not actual clients yet. They're still leads. So you want to be able to work with, the, with your leads and to convert them to a prospect. That's the goal. So you might have um, some sort of database where you import 1,000 leads. You don't want them taking up your contacts and space inside your pipe drive because they're leads that may or may not you know, convert to a deal or convert to a prospect. So you'll see here, I have a variety of LinkedIn labels that I've created. So I simply go into that, and I can change the label to LinkedIn. 
and I can close that. So I can then run a report to say, show me every lead that has a label LinkedIn. So now I know that every single lead that I have has come from LinkedIn. We have Inner Circle, which is a group I work with, networking group. Um, then you can have Facebook, uh, other social media platforms. You can have uh, straight off your website. You can do a, they can do a web form that you capture here. So you know where your leads are coming from. So you know how to then nurture that potential prospect. Okay, so I just want to show you how I've actually captured these directly into. I didn't have to type these in. I didn't have to copy and paste. I simply inside of LinkedIn have a simple little program because remember all cloud-based programs can talk to each other. There's a bridging platform, whether you use Zapier or other Pi.io, things like that. You can talk to through what's called an API, any program that's cloud-based, okay? So what I have here is a product called LinkMatch and I simply installed it on my browser and it said, where's your pipe drive? I connected the two platforms together. So if I go down here, you can see a little green tick. So every one of these green ticks mean, meant that I went into that contact and you can see here, so Max registered for the call today for to be part of this webinar. He's in LinkedIn because I found him through the people that have registered for this group. I don't need to copy and paste his details. I simply hit add to pipe drive. Now the screen that comes up is going to now sync his, all the information that's in LinkedIn, I can now capture phone number address, whatever there's a public profile inside LinkedIn, I can now capture inside of here and then this stage, in this point for the LinkedIn process, I'm going to capture and add as a new lead. So simply click that. And it captures that. I create and close. It's now saving that. So when I come back into my leads inbox, that lead will now appear straight up here. So if I wanted to go into that lead, I can send a concrete activity. So I can set, you know, plan for a call, a meeting, a task, or whichever that looks like. I can email directly from here. So again, all this information you can still use. You can still use every single thing in Pipedrive, including sending and receiving emails. So you see my signatures automatically there. But they don't become a contact inside your Pipedrive until you actually mark them off as a prospect. So you're bringing them across. So they'll eventually end up in this stage right here, because this is where you're telling it to go. You want to be able to capture that as a prospect. So going back to my leads inbox, and I have refreshed this page, you can see that lead that I just captured from there, I can now simply click and label them as a LinkedIn. So you can have different types of leads that come through. I can look across here and click these three little dots and convert to a deal. So if I convert that to a deal, straight away, this page comes up and we know that it's going to go into CK sales. And I save that. I could then go back into my pipeline and see that it's now a prospect. Now we can start nurturing that particular lead or prospect because I made contact, we've had a phone call, we said, yes, we'd love to work together. And now we can go through the stages of that sales stage. So we'll leave that there. Thank you, Zoho Corporation, for letting me use you as an example. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is now go back into Leads Inbox. You'll see here we've got Lead Boosters. So this is a little bit of, this is an add-on to Pipedrive, which enhances. So yes, we can capture leads. Yes, we can connect third-party programs and other apps to, to, to send that information directly as a lead. When you look at these main primary three I'm going to talk about today. So the live chat is simply a live chat that creates a code for your website. So it simply creates a WordPress code and, and one of many different codes, but WordPress being the example here. So what this looks like in our website, if I go to our contact page, you'll see if I click this down here, we have this pop-up that's created. So this is just a simple code that gets created by Pipedrive. You copy it, you give it to your web developer, and they paste it directly into the code of your contact page or your website. So this, this appears on every page of my website. So if I click back to here, you'll see that it will pop up on the bottom right-hand corner, which just means it creates the conversation the flow. So now when anyone goes to your website, they have an option to either look at the let's talk. So let's talk is a straightaway live chat you're having with that particular person. Now, as soon as they wanna communicate, they need to give you your name and their email address. Those are the two primary functions that you wanna capture because the idea is you want them to end up in your leads inbox. And you can see the source will be from either the chat bot or live chat or web form. Those are the three main things I wanna show you. So if they hit let's talk, you're having a live chat. They get the phone number, or at least their name and email address, captures as a lead. 
if they click one of these auto bots, so this is the second part of see the chat bot there. So this is simply created. So if I actually went over here to edit, so this chat bot is, is adding prescribed questions. So preset questions that you want to ask the client. And I'm sure you've all been to websites where you've seen these like, welcome to our website, what brings you here? And you select which one you want. It saves time. It saves a person monitoring that because it's asking some of these things. In other words, it's qualifying qualifying that lead. So we hear this is the breakdown. Simply, web, this is driven from a template. I didn't have to make all this up. I just fill in the blanks. So what is being asked? Is it qualified or disqualified? Where do we put these leads? You put them in your leads inbox. Who do we want to email notification, which would be me? And we can even schedule a 15 minute consultation, which is part of the activities built into Pipedrive, allows you to put predetermined or predefined times that you sim simply can send as a link and anyone can actually create a calendar event. Like it's similar to Calendly, Calendly and other programs like that that just say, click here to book a meeting with me. And they can have a choice of a 15 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute uh, meeting with you. I've selected the 15 minute consultation. That's the meeting greet that automatically goes in my calendar, then syncs to my Google Calendar. So straight away, I'll get a notification saying that there's been a new client from your website who wants to have a meeting with you. So all of that is pre-generated directly from that code, and that code gets added to here. So once anything is clicked around, would you like to learn more about Pipedrive CRM? That's when the questions and flowing starts happening. Okay, And we then capture the name. We capture the email address. And once they've done that, it then flows through into the leads inbox. The same with the contact us form. And again, I'll show you what that looks like over here. So web forms is the contact us page. So that simply says we've had 837 views, seven in, 17 interactions and 15 submitted. And it shows you your conversion rate of how many people actually go to your form and fill in these details here. And when they hit submit, it goes directly to your lead, leads inbox telling you that it was a web form that people have actually, someone's actually filled out and then you can then communicate with that client. Okay, so those are the main things, the things inside Pipedrive under the leads inbox. The prospector, I'm not gonna go through that today, but that's basically an add-on again, that's a gigantic database of the world of every business. So you can break it down to say, show me everyone in APAC, then Australia, then New South Wales, then Sydney, every electrician, this company size is a one to 10, and then you hit search and it displays every company that fits those categories that you've pinpointed down. And then you simply click it and convert it to a lead. Okay, so that's where you can really start seeing the power of capturing leads, but letting one single source of a CRM take you there, okay? So again, if we go back into looking at these processes, the, the ideas, the most important things that we need to have are why do we have these tools here in the first place? And the purpose is we need to have some tools so we can track those tools, record how that process is done inside these tools, then put them in your system hub so that process is there. So if you've heard of Loom, where you can just click it, you record, here's how we add a contact in our CRM. Here's how we add an invoice into our Xero. Like you then record and talk your way through that process so you have something to put in system hub. So I've known many clients who are still leaving everything out of Outlook and spreadsheets. When they try to process things, it's difficult to process things when it's all one in their brain or two scattered across the Google Drive folder of a bunch of Word documents and how they do things. The stage one of capturing the best processes is having the right tools to capture them in the first place. So if you know that you've got systems management, that's where we put them. We have a good finance uh, program that we use. Let's capture how we do. We add the contacts. We do purchase orders. We do invoices. We do the things that we need to do that are pertaining to the finance department. Project management, we understand how to record each project that we're working on, what's the list of things we do, who's doing it, and by when. That then goes as saved as a process in your system hub. And the same with Google and the same with your CRM. So we want to understand how you're nurturing those clients and how they're getting through. So going back over to the pipe drive, if you have proposals that we're doing, you've probably heard of DocuSign and PandaDoc and all these other programs that allow you to do quotes. Inside here, if I go into this particular deal right here, and I go over here to documents, I simply select from one of my templates that I've created before, and I'll just open gallery. So here we have a whole bunch of templates that are preset as a proposal. So I simply, if I just select one of these, and we call, let's call it the pipe drive, 
So it simply captures every, every detail of that deal. So the person's name, today's date, uh, the, the deal title, um, everything that's there will pre-populate these fields right here based on what I've told it to grab from here. So this, there's the breakdown of the proposal. I didn't have to type it more than once. I've typed it once. I'm simply allowing Pipedrive to determine who it's for in today's date and what it's for. So that looks good to me if I say use to create document. I can then go into and just confirm that it looks exactly what I want it to look like. And at this point, I can either save this proposal as a link and then capture that link and, and send an email saying, dear client, here's a link to the proposal we talked about. I can download it as a PDF, which is right there. So I actually send the attachment to them or I can actually request a signature. So it goes, the proposal goes to them with a link. They click the link, they review the proposal, they approve it, they've signed it, electrically signed it. Copy goes to them, copy comes to me, done. So I'm at a point with all of my templates that I work with now that I literally have to wait 10, 15, 20 minutes to send it because it looks a bit weird if I say, yes, I'll get a proposal to you today and I can have it to them within 35 seconds because that's the quick process of using a platform that has everything built into it so that the more information you put into your CRM and the more uh, add-ons that you can use with it, the quicker you can respond and the quicker you can then move along so that basically every single sale that you have and everything that you're doing and you're tracking is simple. It's easy. You're not jumping from one platform to another. You're simply doing this so you can nurture your clients, take care of your activities and know where your sales are at any given point in time. Okay. So with the contacts, one of the things you can do inside PipeDrive is you can send 100 emails out in any given point in time. So like MailChimp, you can send thousands, but you pay for that subscription if you're doing, I think, under 1,000 or 5,000. With PipeDrive, if you have broken down, so if I look at all of our contacts, and these are just people inside my PipeDrive, when I just look at up here, we go to everyone, you can see I've got 1,063 people in here, but every single person has a label. Okay, so if I want to now say, I want to send, I just want to look at my views of just my clients. I click that. It's now showing me every person that contact that's in my pipe drive that's been labeled as a client. I can now look at that and go, right, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I now want to say, let's just look at a particular client that lives in a certain area, or I want to you know, filter it down. So I want to just talk to our Google clients. You can break down your filter to say, show me every person that's labeled as a client that has a service called Google. Boom, it then gives you, you know, 100 or 10, let's just use a couple of these in, as an example. So let's just say you've displayed that filter. So we want to laser like, we want to take it down from 1,000 to 500, from 500 to, you want to send an email that is so specific to that particular client. So if we have a, a Google client or a systemology client, I can filter it down to every single subscription they have, product we provide to them, their company size. If they are referred to us by a particular person or company, um, their area, their industry. If I want to look at just electricians, I can break it down to here and see this button up here. It says send group email. I can simply click that and it brings up an email page, it has my signature automatically in there. There's the emails we're going to send. Now, yep, I could put a subject and I could put just the email saying, hey, all, whichever, or I can use a template that basically has all of our templates that we've done. So if I want to select one of those, for example, so this is an email that I composed before, saved it as a template. I've used the form, the use the first name field by simply using the first name. And then I just put a comma. So it's going to use the first name of each person from this group. It's going to put them there. There's the email. There's my signature. Hit send. Done. So if you're running an email campaign that's specific and really targeting towards someone that you're really trying to work with, that is where you can save it as a template and simply send as many emails as you want to anytime that you want to. Okay, so I'm just going to cancel that. So just a quick overview, the, the purpose of the CRM is so you have a place you can nurture your sales, your deals, your clients, communicating with your clients, break, filtering your clients into client types, filtering them down to industry types as well into any custom field that you want to create. You can do that there. One of the other things inside of Pipedrive is it now remembering with any CRM, any data you put in, the more you put in, the more you can pull out, okay? So if you're putting in every activity to activity type, so phone calls, emails, you're doing every deal with dollar value. So you're actually tracking what does it look like if I was to pull a report out in six months, what information could I possibly pull out that's going to be a benefit to me so I can see how the business is tracking. 
So here, this view here is simply a, a typical dashboard of your, of your company. So it tracks how many deals you've won, how many deals you've lost over a given period of time. Here we have, if you have goals set up, you can set up goals to say that you want to track so many activities per month on a particular sales cycle. So if you want to have 15 proposals per month that you want to send out, that's your goal. You simply put in your goals into here so that at any point in time you can track where you're going. So then even so, if you wanted to have a public link, so if I copied that link and I simply just go into here and I paste that, imagine having your boardroom or even in your office, you've had a spare monitor and you have a live dashboard of every single project you're working with, every deal you're on, every activity you're doing. You basically walk in the room, you can see how you're tracking. And if you've got a team and you're in your boardroom and you have this something like this, the team is now transparently seeing how you guys are tracking for the month, the quarter, the financial year, whatever that looks like. You have a place to go to to either see if you're doing well or see if you need to be picking up the game. So by the end of the month, you're reaching these goals. Okay. So that is how you can use Pipedrive in your insights for reporting. You can create as many goals as you want to. It's fully customizable. You can have as many activity types as you want to. You can create deals and have many pipelines as you want to. So in here, you can see. I have about eight different pipelines in each one of these. And again, this is not a project that we're staying high level. This is information that's stored and being used for something like ClickUp or Asana or Monday. That's when you get the, the really nitty gritty details of a project. This is high level stuff of where we are at with a particular client and what stage, what stage are we in with that particular client. Each one of these could have their own projects going back to again, inside ClickUp, you could have 15 things that follow through. So if the demo, what does a demo look like? If I'm in Pipedrive and, and the client is in this stage right here, what does it look like inside here? There's my Pipedrive demo because I created a temp temp template called Pipedrive demo. And these are basically every single thing I tick off as I go through it and making sure I don't miss a thing. That's the nitty gritty of the project. This is the high level that yep, they're at the demo stage. I'm even set it so that if somebody signs up for a 45 day trial, when I drag this into that stage right there, they automatically get an email that takes them to a course that I created on how to get the best out of Pipedrive. So they feel like, okay, right, we're in this trial. We've got Rob help, helping us out, getting everything up and running, but he's also included a course which will guide us. And the video courses are all two to three minutes long. So it's not complicated, but just enough to help them. So by the time we do meet up, they're more familiar with the product. And I didn't have to create the course multiple times. I created the course once and I saved the link and that link goes out to every client that ever reaches this stage. So the idea with workflow automations is automate as much as you can to a degree. You just don't wanna be sending out thousands of emails every week because then your clients and prospects are gonna realize that this is just fully automated, it's not enough. So there's gotta be that fine balance of communicating face-to-face, -face, communicating a single email and activity and then automating as much as you can to save you time and money in the process of actually trying to communicate as well. So there's that fine balance. So again, everything that we're going through, the goal is to end up sitting in each one of your departments inside System Hub is where you want everything that we're capturing from all five of these tools, including videos, including any sort of role-playing thing that you can do, you simply embed so every single one of these, anything that we're doing inside of a process, for example, can be supported with an embedded video. You can have anything you want, whether it's images, you can attach anything that you want to, email attachments, email templates, you can upload PDFs, anything that you want to have here can be captured inside of your system hub. So again, it's, it's making it fun to use. So it's not just another, you know, SOP that people print out and they have these booklets that are sitting in the corner of the room in the office that they look at once every three years during accreditation. We want to have a place where you want to go to. So every single one of these processes. So again, if we go into that, for example, and this might be a process that's been captured, you notice that if we've marked off as green, green means it's completed, it's done. It's exactly the way the company wants to see a process. We can simply go over to here and again, share that. So it creates a URL. So if I go into this and you wanna basically share, 
this process with someone external. So you, you've got contractors you're doing processes for. You want them to review your process before they go into a job for you, for example. Okay. You simply share the link. So this becomes a public website. So they can't go into your system hub. They don't need to log in. They don't need to use them and password. You're simply created a process which you want to share to a particular person or a company that they can't, it's read only. It's a website that comes up. So the power of this is that your system hub has all of your processes, all of your systems that you can have internal so people can log in and contribute. They can view. You have a learning track that they can go to to understand how it works. And then you have a place where you can actually send out and they can view and review and markups complete in the learning track. So that is where we want everything to end up is right here based on everything that we're capturing from your other processes. So that is basically everything that I wanted to cover today. I hope that, that information has been useful. Um, I can see that there is a, a question. Can you, from Jason, can you email a pipe drive link to anyone and let them book an appointment with you in an open time? Yes. So basically, if I'm sending an email and I'll just go into, I'll go into any one of these and I'll go back into this example. So if I go into here and I want to send an email right here, you can actually see that I can put a subject. I can select a template directly from this email. If you've already created a template, you can insert a field to say first name already, but obviously it's a single email. So it's, you can capture different things that you want to use. If it's grouped, you can say, yeah, use first email. Propose time. This is where straight away, if I click that, it's automatically put that in there right there. And that link is simply going directly to the invite to there. So I didn't have to type it in. I didn't have to send it a calendar invite and then create whatever. I have created this 15 minute consultation ses session inside PipeDrive with Google Meet automatically built into it with instructions on how to use Google Meet as well. So I've just added Google Meet to the proposed times. This is now actively looking at my Google Calendar live. So if we select that, you can see the available time slots, all right, for that date, which is tomorrow. And when they click that, they simply put in their name, email, phone number, and topics you want to discuss during the meeting and hit confirm. When they get the invite, Google Meet the link, which is similar to Zoom, will automatically get created. So all they've got to do is click that Google Meet and join that whenever that time is set. Okay. So Jason, hope, hopefully that answers your question. Um, yeah, we can get rid of calendar. Yeah, exactly. So the whole idea is you want to be able to go into your activities. And again, if we look at activities from a list point of view, the proposed times, this is where you can have, and if I go to manage availability, you can have 1.5 hour, one hour, 44, you can have multiple time slots available. In this example, I've got a 15 minute one turned on. So anyone that uses that link can book in a call. Okay. So uh, Trigan, this, oh, Pete, hey Pete. Um, a lot of great info covered here, and I know this is recorded. However, is there somewhere that the tools are broken down and the setup between each are explained? Um, absolutely. So I can even break it down into each tools into separate segments of the video, and I'll save those and I'll send those across to you. Okay. So also, if anyone has any questions, um, I'm the recording for this session is will be available as well. So if you, there's anything that I've gone through as a process overall, the entire recording will be saved back into LinkedIn as well for your viewing. Um, any other questions you guys might have that are in, um, that you haven't put in here, you think about later, jump on LinkedIn, add that comment as well, or add that question as well. Also for, for everyone that's actually here today, um, if anyone wants a book, if anyone wants to read the systemology book and you haven't got a copy of this already, let me know in either the comments here or in LinkedIn, I will post you this book this week, okay? Free of charge, all right? And the other thing is also, if anyone wants to go through the CCF process as well, so we're going to go through that. Anyone, only for the people that are in the call today, if you want to go through a critical client flow for your business, again, send a message, email me, send a, put a comment in LinkedIn, and let's book a time where I can go through this process with you. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour to go through. But if you can think of one service or one product that you just you know inside and out, you know, the beginning right to the repeat process where you've gathered that client, let's go through it together because this is a great starting point to start to capture those systems and get them into System Hub, okay? So let me know if that's something that you'd like to do as well, okay? So that's it for me, guys. I hope you got some value and got some information from this. It's been so much fun 
just basically going through all the things that I use every day. Everything that I've showed you today is a live example of how we use everything every single day. There's no demos. There's no um, just examples. Everything that I've showed you today is exactly what we're doing every day as a business, OK? So I appreciate your time. Let me know if you have any questions at all, either in the comment or LinkedIn as well. And I hope to connect with you guys soon. Thank you.